Hi, my name is Jess Aaron, and I am the author of Wrapped Up in Lies, The Adventures of Ms. Fortune. Here's a hard co a copy of it. And I look forward to getting to know you, and hopefully you'll get to know me a little better through this interview. I have quite a few hobbies. Um, in my spare time, when I'm not uh, playing with my two-year-old daughter or hanging out with my husband. I love to do Bollywood dancing and I've been taking Bollywood dancing for the past two years. It's super fun and really high paced and hard to keep up, <laughs> but I really enjoy doing that. I also enjoy reading about ancient history, watching TV shows about ancient history, and I also like watching Bollywood movies and watching Korean dramas. That have, have been two of my things lately that I really enjoy doing when I'm not writing or uh, hanging out with my family. Uh, so in college, I studied communications, but I actually have more units in pre... In, they didn't have ancient history at my college, so I took uh, what was called pre-industrial European history. <laughs> I know it sounds really... I don't know self-important in some ways. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about the medieval period, a lot of classes on trebuchets, um, a lot of classes on the art of the time and that sort of thing. And of course I took every class possible about ancient history and that was a lot of fun to take those. I actually have my master's degree in radio and television with a specialty in video games. So for my master's degree, I got to play video games and that was a lot of fun. Um, my specialty is in MMORPGs, which are like the giant world video games, the Warcraft and Starcraft. I uh, specialized in the policing mechanisms within those video games. And um, my first job out of college, I I went on a lecture series uh, regarding my research in those video games. Um, another fun fact about myself is that uh, my first job was working for a video game company and when I was 14 I was invited to start working for Blizzard and Sendent and Davidson at the time. Some of those don't even exist anymore. But uh, I used to go to stores and play video games and teach other people how to play video games. Uh, I also, in college, became really interested in genealogy, and so I researched my family history, and then um, I was part of a computer club at the time, and we were having Tech TV come speak to us, and I was telling them about my research, and so they invited me to come on their show, so I was on Tech TV a few times regarding um, genealogy. Now uh, Tech TV doesn't exist anymore, now it, it's melded into something else, but at the time... Um, that was a lot of fun, and I ended up working for Tech TV for a while too in their international productions department. And I used to work on the leads for TV shows in Europe and Asia. So that was a lot of fun to do uh, while I was in school. I started writing about a year and a half ago. At the time, my daughter was taking three hour long naps in the middle of the day. I know no parent should ever complain with that. It was really nice, but at the same time, sometimes I kind of got tired of like reading a book or watching TV or I really didn't feel like doing the laundry, didn't feel like cleaning the house or doing the dishes. I wanted to do something else and I really wanted to do something that would be kind of fun, creative and productive and something that I could talk about with my husband. Um, at the end of the day, it, things that weren't like, oh, how many uh, diapers I changed that day or how many loads of laundry I got done that day. I wanted something just for me that I could talk to him about and that I could talk to other people about. So I was looking through some travel blogs online and one of them was having a short story contest and I thought, oh, I, I could do that. And the idea for Emma Fortune, the main character of my book, Wrapped Up in Lies, just popped in my head. And I went downstairs and I started writing and within the hour I had pushed out the majority of my um, first chapter. It just flew right out of me. The thing was is that I started thinking about it and I really liked Emma Fortune. I thought she was a lot of fun and I decided I didn't want to enter her into the short story contest 
Instead, I wanted to write the rest of her story, the whole book. So that's what I did. I wrote the whole book. And it was really a lot of fun for me because in the story, I include, I include very loosely um, some of my own experiences, like riding a camel, <laughs> those sorts of things. Um, this book is just meant to be a light-hearted, fun, escape from reality book. Nothing serious. Uh, that's that's kind of the way I am. I, I just don't want anything serious. Just a lot of fun. And that's the way my book is too. I just hope that people find it to be something that after a long day at work or if they're on their lunch break and they just want to get away to 1920s Egypt and Jordan and just kind of have fun, kind of get a little idea of what maybe some of the buildings look like there that they enjoy my book and and have a lot of fun reading it. Well, my typical writing session usually is in the evening after my daughter goes to sleep and while my husband is exercising. <laughs> so what I typically do is usually around seven o'clock at night, seven to eight, sometimes 8.30, sometimes nine, sometimes a little later. Um, I sit down and I get to work and I don't usually have the TV on. I usually work in silence. I find that if I have the TV on, I start to watch the show. Uh, I've tried I've tried putting on like some of my Bollywood movies on, and unfortunately, at the end of the day, I find that I'm just reading the subtitles of the movie instead of working on my stuff. So I don't watch any TV or have any distractions, and I find that's the way I'm most productive. So usually, I'll work for about an hour, hour and a half until my husband's finished with his exercise, and then. He'll come in and we'll watch a show together, eat dessert, and then he'll go and he'll go, I don't know, like clean the kitchen or watch his own show, read a story, whatever he wants to do, and I will work for another maybe three hours or so. I usually work maybe until about 11.30 at night. So um, yeah, that's, that's a typical day for me. I uh, find that I work best at night. That's the way I've always been my whole life. I work best late late at night so that's kind of good because I don't have the days anymore to work my daughter doesn't nap anymore <laughs> so I don't have that three window a three hour window of time that I used to have to work so I have to do it in the evening um, on the weekends my daughter goes and visits her grandparents in the morning my husband will go with her there and so I'll have the mornings on Saturday to work and then she visits my parents on Sunday mornings, so then I have those mornings to work too, and I usually take advantage of every moment I can to work. I really enjoy writing, and I find it to be a wonderful stress reliever for me. I also find it to be kind of uh, just a way that I can relive my vacations since I won't be going on vacation anytime soon with a toddler. <laughs> I know it's a lot of fun, and I wish I could take her somewhere, but I am just a uh, yeah, just not that brave yet. <laughs> the thought of lugging all the stuff is daunting. So um, it's a wonderful way for me to feel like I'm reliving some of my vacations. I also really enjoy it because then when my husband and I get to chat with each other, I feel like I have something that I can tell him about that I'm really excited about. And I really appreciate his support. He's been just wonderful in doing anything he can to make sure that I have as much time as possible to work on my stories and also just supporting me in every way possible with my stories. So I, I really appreciate that um, as well as my, my parents have been really great too in helping me out. So I thank all of them. Thank you. No, I don't set any goals for myself. <laughs> um, I might say that I'd like to do this today. Uh, or I'd like to do that tomorrow. I'm one of those people that I will not be able to write if I don't feel like writing. It, it just doesn't happen for me. So I have learned, um, when, like when I was in college, I took a lot of history classes. I had to do a lot of writing in those and all my communications classes, a lot of writing in those. So one thing I've learned about myself is I can't force it. So when I do feel like writing, I usually can write um, I've written up to six hours in one day, so I'm fortunate in the fact that I, ha I do, I'm able to do it for a long period of time when I feel like it, um, but I can't force myself to write. So if one night I really don't feel like I'm going to write, I don't push myself, I might work instead on 
um, trying to network with fellow authors or um, reaching out to bloggers or doing something else instead and then come back to it when I feel like it. Uh, obviously I really like to read historical stuff. Um, when I read historical stuff though I usually go for real historical books um, like like even like textbooks I like to read. My husband thinks that's really boring but I really like it. <laughs> I just think it's really interesting and fun um, and I like to incor uh, incorporate the things that I learn into my books. It kind of gets my creative juices flowing reading all those kind of things. So I like that. Um, I also really like romance novels. I do. They're kind of my guilty pleasure. When I just want to relax after a long day, I like to read a romance novel. Um, I really like like Victorian romance novels or even modern day romance novels, but just something that you don't have to think much about and just kind of enjoy yourself. So that's what my book is too. It, it has some romance in it, it has some adventure, it has historical facts in it. I kind of melted everything that I like to read into one book and just, as I said, something relaxing not to be taken seriously. Just kind of fun stuff. Uh, currently I'm reading The Bull of Minos by Leonard Contrell. Uh, it's really interesting. So the book was published in 1952 and Leonard Contrell was an archaeologist and he talks about in his time how he um, went to Greece in 1947 to do an excavation and he talks also about the work of Schliemann and Evans and their work in um, in Greece during their excavation. So I'm, I'm finding it very very interesting and it's kind of getting my creative juices flowing, so I'm enjoying that book a lot. I currently have two other projects in the works right now. My editor just got back to me the final edits for the second in the Adventures of Misfortune series. So I am going to be working on that, getting those final edits done, and then we're going to do a final read through. The second one is called Sunk by Lies, and in that one it features Emma Fortune and her team going to find the lost palace of Cleopatra. So a long time ago in Alexandria, there was this there's this area called Portus Mangus, and there was a island in the middle of it, and on that island was Cleopatra's palace. Well, a long time ago, there was a big earthquake and the island sunk. So this is all true. That, that all happened. So in my book, Emma Fortune and her gang are going to go find the palace. So I won't tell you any more because you've got you to gotta read the book. So if you're interested in that, please be sure to like me on Facebook or check out my website. And um, so that way you can keep up to date when it's going to come out. The second thing that I'm working on is on Wattpad. Wattpad is a website, uh, The what it reminds me most of is, do you remember those choose your own adventure books when you were a kid and you could pick what ending you wanted? It's kind of like that. So what happens is authors put up a chapter of their book and then the readers you know, chat with the author about it. They, they give comments and they say what they like, what they didn't like, what they'd like to see. And so it's a great way for the author and the readers to kind of make a work together in a way. So I just put up the first chapter of my next book there. It's called Amon Pinafore, The Tomb Robber. And it is actually about a real life tomb robber. His name was Amon Pinafore. And they have the records of his trial. They're in a, in a area called the Amherst uh, Papyrus. So they're in this papyrus and they actually have like his testimony and everything. And so um, my story is his story from his point of view of being the tomb robber. And he was a tomb robber during the 20th dynasty in Egypt. So that was in about um, 1115 BCE, so a long time ago. But it's really interesting to read the different papyrus with the accounts of his trial because they like interviewed his wife, they interviewed two of the children of one of the men who had been caught as a tomb robber, 
Um, it's really, really interesting. So uh, if, if you're interested in reading more about his story, please be sure to check me out on Wattpad and give me your comments underneath my chapters. Let me know what you think. Of course, we can't change the outcome of the story because we know how it's going to end like the Titanic, but you can help me determine how his path is going to go to get there. So it should be a lot of fun. Uh, on Wattpad, I am Jess Aaron Author, so be sure to check that out. So some advice that I'd give to an aspiring writer is to just go for it. Um, I wrote my first book. It took me a month to write The Adventures of Misfortune Wrapped Up in Lies. Um, the story just flew right out of me. I couldn't believe how quickly I wrote it and before I knew it I had had over 300 pages. Um, but then I just sat on it for a year. I had no idea what I should do next. I knew I needed an editor but I wasn't sure how to find one. Um, I didn't really know how to publish it and so one of the things that happened that helped me move forward was that my brother bought me one of those um, little classes on Udemy on how to publish your book. So he, he just said to me one day, oh here I bought you this, uh, why don't you check it out? And I you know, started watching it and it helped me kind of move forward in finding an editor and then move forward in deciding how I wanted to publish because I was like, I don't know if I want to go the traditional route and try some of the publishing houses or if I want to do self-publishing. I, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So watching the, those classes really helped and then I also went on and, um, you know, tried to chat with other authors and kind of get their suggestions. So if I read a book that I really liked, I sometimes would email the author and ask them who they used as their editor or ask them for any suggestions they had. And I found a lot of the times that the authors would respond and they were really, really nice. So um, I think that that's something that aspiring writers should keep in mind uh, is to just go for it, try your best. I know too when I was going to publish my book that it's around the holiday period and I was like, oh, I don't know if I should publish it now or should I publish it later? Uh, and then I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna go for it and see what happens. And so I think that aspiring writers should just go for it and see what happens. You'll always learn, you know, what you should do next time. Every time you do it, you'll learn what you should do next time. And I certainly have learned a lot of that. <laughs> But it's been a wonderful experience and I've met a lot of really, really nice people. So just go for it. Hmm, books or movies. That's a really hard one. I would have to say I would prefer to read a book, but I'm, I kind of have this weird thing. If I start the book, I have to be able to finish the book that day. I've always been like that. Um, before I had my daughter I used to read a book a day. Um, I'm, a, I'm a speed reader and so uh, I would even stay up until the middle of the night to read the book. That's kind of one of my funny little quirks. So if I know that I am not going to be able to, if I, if I, let me put it this way, I know that if I shouldn't finish the book, meaning that I would go to bed way too late and not be able to function the next day, then as much as I would love to read it, I probably will watch the movie because the movie is only an hour and a half long. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's my answer to that one. <laughs> dogs. I really like dogs. I used to have a pet dog and she was so wonderful. I really, I really miss her. I hope to get another dog one day so that my daughter can experience the joy of having a dog because they're super, super fun. <laughs> I've never uh, lived with cats, so I can't really say as to that experience, but for me it would be dogs. Definitely ice cream, absolutely no contest. I would eat ice cream over any other food. And I only eat one flavor, I only eat chocolate. I'm very, very loyal. And I would choose to have it, I actually have it every day, which is kind of bad, I, I really shouldn't. but. I do <laughs> because it makes me happy. <laughs> I 
I would definitely choose a car because I am a klutz, much, much like Emma Fortune in my books. So um, I'd probably get really hurt on a motorcycle. So definitely a car. Ebook. Definitely an ebook. I know that kind of goes against the grain. Um, I like ebooks because I have a lot of them right there that I can choose from. And I also, one of the things that used to happen to me a lot when I read physical books is that I would get the ink on my fingers and it would really, I know this, this, this sounds ridiculous, but it would really dry my fingers out and I really didn't like the feeling. It felt kind of gross. So I definitely prefer ebooks. Although when I first got my first ebook reader, like eight years ago, I was not a fan, but now I really love it. I am a real homebody, so I definitely prefer a night's in. Um, my favorite night, <laughs> this sounds really, really boring, I know, but my favorite kind of night is getting a chance to work on my books for, well, actually, it's kind of like every night, um, getting a chance to work on my books for a while, um, watching a show with my husband while I eat dessert, <laughs> and then working a bit more. I know that sounds really boring, but I really, really like doing that, so I would definitely choose that over just about everything else except maybe if I was going to travel somewhere really fun then I'd choose that but other than that I'd just rather stay at home and do my thing. I would choose living in the country if I could have horses because I really love riding horses and I don't get to do it very often. Um, I would definitely choose living in the country over the city but I'd like to live in a place that is semi close to a city. So if I wanted to go into the city to like see a show or do some sort of shopping that I can't get normally, uh, I would definitely like that. So somewhere close to a city, but kind of with a country-esque feel. And I'd also want to make sure that wherever I lived in the country didn't have too big of bugs because I heard that can be a problem sometimes too. Hmm, I'm not a bug lover. Mm -mm. I would say telekinesis because I love to travel and I would definitely love to just uh, be able to go wherever I wanted to. That would be so awesome. The only thing is I would want to be sure to be able to bring my daughter and husband with me because I know that if I went without them, I would, I would the whole time be kind of like, oh, they would love this. I'd feel bad. So I'd, it would have to be like The Incredibles where everyone had the, the superpower. That is a really hard question for me, traveling to the past or to the future. I love to read about the past. I love to go and see places. Like I, I loved, oh my goodness, going to Egypt for me was the most incredible experience. Being able to see the pyramids and to walk where the pharaohs once walked was so, so incredible. There's no words to describe how incredible it was. I, I don't think there are words in the English language to describe that. For me, at least, I, I really felt that way, that, that that was just so amazing. But if I had a chance to travel to the past or travel to the future, I would probably travel to the future for a few reasons. First being that I think that life would be a little more comfortable, and I do like my creature comforts, especially my ice cream. And the other reason is, is that I would hope they would have flying cars so that I could ride in a flying car like in Back to the Future because I think that sounds way cool. Uh, also, I had hoped that we had maybe been able to travel to another planet so I could travel to another planet too because that would be really, really cool. The only thing about traveling to the future that might be a little weird is if I met like my descendants. That would be kind of weird. I don't know how I'd feel about that one. That might be a little too weird. So maybe if I traveled to the future, my whole family would have to come with me. Hmm. And what would that do to the space-time continuum? Hmm. I guess that's a question for another day. I personally prefer to always call someone if I can. I find that I am that that it's faster. The amount of time that I would be able to say it is probably shorter than the time that it would take me to text it. But since I spend my day with a two and a half year old who doesn't like my attention to be elsewhere than from her, 
I do find that texting seems to be the way that I go lately. The only problem with texting is, and I don't know if anyone else does this, but the text will come in and I'll read it and then my daughter will call me and I'll put my phone down to go do something and because I remember reading the text, I sometimes forget that I didn't respond to it. So that's the only problem also with texting that I find is that I don't always respond as quickly as I'd like to because I get preoccupied and I remember thinking about it so I think I did it. Hmm, maybe that's something to do with age. I don't know. <laughs> I like, if I had my choice, I really like to travel by airplane. When I was a kid, I remember thinking that traveling by airplane was the most exciting thing on the planet because every airplane you see is going somewhere in the world that, that is just so incredible. And I would I'd think about, oh, where are those people traveling? And oh, what's it like there? So I find the airplanes to be more exciting, the airport, to, I even find the airport to be exciting because I, I think there's just so many possibilities, so many adventures that are gonna start there. So I would definitely choose airplane. Staying in a hotel, all the way. Definitely stay in a hotel. Yeah, I am not a good camper. I wish I was. I know a lot of people really love camping, but no, I'm just, I need, I need my Wi-Fi connection, which I know that you can now have. <sighs> and I like to watch TV at night. It's hard to bring ice cream camping. Definitely a hotel for me. I would have to say I would like to work alone most of the time. I find that I in that I do a lot. Sometimes, okay, this is this may sound really bizarre, but when I was in high school and I had to work in a group, sometimes I would get nervous that other people in the group wouldn't do their job, so I'd just do their part anyway, and I'd come with it to class. And then if they didn't do their part, I would just say, oh, well, I wasn't sure, so I did that part too. And I would just fill it in, or if we didn't think their part was as maybe up to par, we'd put mine in. So. I prefer to work alone because I find that, you know, I do sometimes a lot of the work myself. Also, I like to work on my own timetable and when I want to work. And since I'm a night owl, working at night's best for me, which is not always the best for other people. So working alone is good. Um, but working in a group in life is just an important thing to be able to do. So I would be happy to work in a group if I knew the people I was going to be working with. I would definitely say i rather lose my money uh, because you can always make more money, but you can't get your pictures back. It's kind of funny that I say that too. I know my sisters probably will probably laugh at that because I never take in, I don't take any pictures really um, until I have my daughter. Now I take a million pictures of her, but I have gone on vacations and not taken one picture because between my father and my sister, when we went to Egypt and Jordan, they took 8,000 pictures. So I've never needed to take a picture. <laughs> but I would be really, really, really sad if I lost any of my treasured pictures of our trips or of my daughter or of me with her because then I would kind of feel like, you know, I, I, it, they bring back so much joy. I, every time I look at that picture, I have that memory and I can't buy back my, me you know, my memories. So like, for example, this picture of me kissing the Sphinx, I wouldn't want to lose that. I really like that picture. I think it's fun <laughs> and it brings me a lot of joy to see it. So definitely lose all my money, which I really wouldn't want to do either. I would definitely say true love. Uh, I can't imagine life without my husband. So I would definitely say uh, true love. Plus he's going to be watching this interview. And if I said the lottery, that would get me in. <laughs> I would choose neither and I would be Indiana Jones for the day because I think that sounds like a lot of fun. When I was a kid I really really wanted to be Indiana Jones. I and because of Indiana Jones actually that's why I went to Petra it, when you know when I saw the last crusade and they you know had the the scene where they rode in and Petra was in front of them, you know, it's the city that's carved out of the stone. I was just like, 
and I couldn't even believe that that was a real place. I, I was just so taken aback by it. And the more I did my research and I found out it was a real place, this was when I was older because I saw the movie when I was really young, I was like, I have to go there. And so for me, Indiana Jones has really propelled me to travel. And so I would definitely be Indiana Jones for the day uh, without the uh, people chasing me because I don't think that part sounds as fun. Thank you so much for listening to this interview. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please feel free to contact me. I always love to hear from everyone. My um, email is jessarenauthor at gmail.com and that's Aaron as in E-R-I-N. Or you can go to my website at www.theadventuresofmisfortune.blogspot.com or you can also find me on Amazon, find me on Wattpad under Jess Aaron Author. You can comment on my newest story, Amen Pinafore, The Tomb Robber. And I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you so much.